Welcome to DowerChin.com. Today we're going to take a look at a keyboard. This here is the Any Pro 2. This is a 60% keyboard, mechanical keyboard, uh, with actually you know, standard mechanical keys that actually can be pulled off. And if you're not familiar with, with a 60% keyboard, it actually is a, a keyboard with a lot less keys, uh, even less than a 10 key list, which are the keyboards that don't have numeric keypads. And so this is going to be very interesting. Like This is my first one. I never tried one of these kind of keyboards before, so I'm excited to try it out. So let's go open the box, see what's inside, see what you get, and plug it in, and let's give it a go. So once you have it unboxed, this is what you have inside. You have a key puller that goes along with these colored unmarked keys, which you can pop on here if you want to. Then you have a USB-C cable, uh, to type A cable here, so that you can, you know, that's how it plugs in interfaces with the computer. And that's actually kind of important because there is software that gives you the ability to program this keyboard. And an instruction manual, and there's a link for the software here. And it's a quite an in-depth little manual. It talks about some of the interesting functions of this thing, which we'll get into as we start using this thing. So let's take a quick look at the keyboard here. So we can see real quick that the keyboard is a relatively thick in the sense that, you know, this is thicker than most keyboards I'm used to because these are full height keys, uh, full height mechanical keyboard keys here. And uh, let's see. So we can look at the back here on the left side. We have the USB-C connector. And on the bottom side, we, there are no extendable feet, but there are these rubber, rubber feet to, here to keep the keyboard on the table, and an on-off switch for the Bluetooth functionality. All right, so if you look at this real quick, one of the things that's going to strike, probably stands out the most to you, is that there are no arrow keys. Typically, there are arrow keys on, on most keyboards, as well as uh, no um, home end, page up, page down. Now, there are some on the bottom side here labeled that these are the FN keys, for some of those functions as well. So that's going to be interesting. It's a, but it's probably going to take a bit of getting used to because um, you know, if you're using those keys a lot, then it's going to be an interesting challenge. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do before doing anything is I'm going to go grab the software. Now, the software is something called OBINS, uh, and you have to go to en.obins.net. I'll provide the link in the description below. Once you get there, you can download the kit. Now, it's available for Windows, Linux, and Mac. I'll grab the, the, the Windows version. So once I've downloaded it, I can go to my downloads folder and go to find the opens kit 111.x64. That's what I, that I'm going to use. I'll double click that to install. Now it's going to give you a warning about uh, it's, uh, you know, it uh, doesn't like it, but I'll just go to the more info and run anyway to install the software. Okay, so once the software is installed, let's go plug it in and we'll see what the software does. So I'll plug this in, plug this in. Okay, the Windows chimes, and so my little default red comes up. Now you see on the screen here, the any the any Pro 2 is now identified. If you click on that, you'll go into some information about the keyboard. So any Pro 2, it's got 97% battery life. So running, running time estimated at 11 hours. So basic settings I have currently set up are, uh, I have a custom layout. There's a tap functionality, which is enabled. And the Magic FN key right here is also uh, set up. The, uh, I have no macros, and capsule ID is default, and auto sleep is enabled. And you can see that there's Bluetooth bindings, which you can all clear. There's a firmware upgrade that you can upgrade firmware. Um, I think I have latest version. I'm not quite sure. Well, I don't know. The, the, the update's kind of weird. You upgrade it, and you go grab it and install it. Um, and so I think I have it all set up, but no, it, it's a little, little weird. So the important part about this thing is looking at the software here is this layout. Now this is really cool. So the, now the, the default layout is the QWERTY layout. And if you wanted to, if you have a particular fancy for other type of keyboards, like a, a buddy of mine is big on Dvorak keys, you, you can actually set those up and see how if you're clicking on that, you can see the layout is changed to equal that. But the, but um, my current one is the modified version of the QWERTY. And so you can see that this is the basic setup over here. You have the FN, if you hold the FN key over here, uh, these keys equate to uh, you know these options. So now as you hold the FN key down, the WASD keys here are gonna be arrows as well as the IKJL setup. And then you have uh, the options for end home and print screen, page up, page down, insert and delete. And then for the FN2, which is the button here, uh, you have options here 
for uh, the pairing up to four devices, which is really kind of cool. And then you have uh, automatically options that are just keyboard only options for changing the brightness, contrast, and color settings for the keys uh, without the software. And once again, this is also going to have WASD and IKJL, as well as the functions here for the print screen, home end, page up, page down, insert, and delete. Now, uh, tap keys basically mean that uh, what's kind of cool is that because there's no arrow keys on here, these actually, these four keys here, uh, if you tap them, will behave like the arrow keys. So, you know, in the absence of actually having arrow keys, tapping on these will do that same operation, which is pretty handy. So what I did to, on mine, so as I, on my current setup here, nothing's changed here, but if I go to the FN1, um, the one big change is, is the delete. Now, default here by the key markings, FN question mark is delete key. I basically set up the FN backspace. It seems, seems like something I've always used before, um, and it just it was more intuitive for me to do so. The other thing I did is on the FN2, I added a media keys. So I set these up as uh, mute, volume up, and volume down. Uh, so just, and then I changed these guys to have a page up, page down, home and end. It just, uh, for me, it was a little bit better. And then I left these alone here. So that's kind of an interesting look at how you can customize the keys. And once again, you know, if you want to change this complete layout, you're more than welcome to, which is really cool. And it's very, very powerful in the sense that you can do such a thing. Now, uh, going on to the backlighting. So my lighting, uh, my, my desk here is a little bit dim so you can see the lighting setup. Now there's even some presets over here. So right now it's red. If I go to yellow, for example, and preview, it'll change yellow, green, preview, and it'll change the colors to match that. Uh, and then uh, there are other options in here for like rainbow. There's some really cool rainbow things going on if you like that kind of thing, uh, as well as this kind of like breathing per key. So you can have like have uh, different uh, uh, key presses here for uh, kind of a little fade out thing. Gradual breathing for the whole thing. So that kind of, you know, kind of a breathe in and out type of thing if you if you like that. Uh, so, you know, there's a lot, a lot of options here. But like uh, if you want to say... Um, Go with like a cyan set setup over here, and you would say you've wanted a special set of keys here. So if you wanted, uh, uh, they're all selected. But if I, if I want like say, uh, unselect these guys around it, uh, it's kind of hard to tell. Uh, but as I, as I click through here, I can deselect those keys, and well, it's kind of kind of hard to do so, but. I just go with the characters, maybe. Just these guys here. I'll change it to like say yellow. Uh, no, it has the inverse. Oh, cancel. Um, let's see here. Well, what you can do with these is you can unselect certain characters and have certain characters be a different color. For example, like say you know these guys here uh, will will be yellow. So you see how I preview that, and all those are yellow. Now, so if I want to say like. Uh, um, Say the uh, well, I can't can't quite get the WASD ones by themselves, but like say WASD this way and these uh, that way. I'm gonna preview that, and you see how it's kind of laid out differently. So it's kind of cool. You can actually customize this a, uh, quite a lot, which is very cool if you want to have these kind of colors. So I'm gonna just go go, go back to that standard purple color. Maybe let's do that, and then we'll we'll stick with that. Other option down here is we have the macros. I didn't play with macros very much, but you can record macros for various different functions. So if you have that special key combination for Photoshop or uh, Illustrator or some other program, you can program those all in. Or if you're an MMO player, you have some special uh, emote thing you want to do, you can program those in and use it. It binds the FN2 key to run those. And then there's another thing here for audio visual visualization. So you can actually have it, uh, if you have it installed, you can actually then uh, play music and this will kind of uh, flash along with uh, the music which is kind of a neat feature uh, I haven't really used it but that's just something that's, that's available for you if you so desire to do so okay so I have WordPad running over here let's go do some typing I'll change the font size to be a bit larger and uh, so we'll talk about the keys real quick so the keys here are mechanical obviously these are Getron Browns so I opted for the Browns because I wanted a quieter switch uh, as opposed to the blues because I think uh, Banggood sells them in brown or blue and the blues are more clickety, and I wanted something more quiet. And so let's go to, I'll, I'll be quiet while I do typing, so you can get a feel for what the keys sound like, and, um, and you can judge from there.
So that's how the keys sound. They're very responsive and they are linear switches, so they don't have any clickety uh, type of latching or click action to them. Uh, so they are very, very responsive. So it's, um, it's a great feeling keyboard. The one thing is, is because the keyboard is so much uh, taller because of the way this thing is laid out, you'll probably want to get a wrist rest of some sort just to elevate your wrists uh, to be a more comfortable position. I don't have one here right now, and so I'm kind of struggling a little bit, and especially you may want to be careful if you actually have wrist issues like carpal tunnel. Uh, but aside from those things, the keys feel great to type on. They just feel, they slide in place. They just feel fantastic to type on. So the typing experience is really nice. The key sound... It's actually quite pleasant. It really is very pleasant sounding. It's, it's not the clickety clackety noise, but you do get you do get to get the uh, clickety clack uh, with the keys when they when they hit down. But you don't have to, you know. Just they they they, they are very responsive as they are. So keyboard experience wise, I think it's a, it's a great feel. So you might want to watch out for the the height issue and it, which can be easily resolved with something like a, a wrist rest you can get online. So let's talk about the uh, Magic FN keys and these uh, uh, FN keys here and the one and the tap keys. So the the first one is the tap keys. Now see my cursor is down at the bottom here. So if I want to go to the top, I can use these Shift uh, FN keys and the control here, these four in the corner here as arrow keys, but just tapping on them. So you can see that just tapping on them, I get to move in those directions. So it's pretty handy. So it's kind of cool that the fact that you don't have um, you know, physically denoted keys for arrows, you actually have the ability to use these now. Now the one thing, the limitation with this is you can't hold the shift key down to, to do select things with this. You can't do that. However, um, if you hold the uh, FN key here and use these keys, the WASD, they perform the same operation. And this way, if you hold the shift key down on here and do the same thing, now you can actually select the text that way. The other way you can do it also is there is the the magic FN. So that magic FN is kind of neat. If you hold the caps lock down, you can actually use the WASD keys here. Uh, or if you programmed it for the other ones, you can do the same thing. So holding the, the, the caps down here, I can do the same type of operation. And you see that I am moving across here. Now if I hold the shift key down, I can do the selections. All right, and as well as you can do the, the um, you can do the FN, let's see which ones were they, I think the, the, uh, mm -hmm. so the page up, page down ones here, you can do those as well. I can't remember which ones I programmed them to be, I don't use them all that often. But, uh, so yeah, so you can actually program all these and have the, the Magic FN for the op extra operations and the one and the tap operations here. So it's, it's really kind of nice. Then of course uh, the, you know, I have the FN del backspace for delete as opposed to the regular delete. So I think this is a, it's a quicker movement than actually doing the FN comma or FN question mark. So it's kind of a weird uh, selection for me. So, uh, so that was a better change I did in, in the software. So typing wise, Fantastic. So let's talk about doing gaming because obviously this is kind of what we geared for not only just typing but also for gaming. Okay, so we got Borderlands running. So I've been playing this for a little while. Notice it's got the Halloween thing. So let's continue on for a little bit. I was on Sanctuary. Let's go and run around and do a couple things. Let's see how this keyboard behaves for playing games. Which I suspect will be fine, but I figure I would show it anyway. Alright, so I'm in Borderlands. We'll play this for a little bit and just see how well uh, it games. I'm pretty sure it'll be just fine. So we'll just kind of uh, run around and um, pull a couple things. Let me, uh, let's see. I don't want to do that. Let me where's the cars? Ah, there they are. So we get a car and run around and shoot some things. Fully loaded and ready to roll. Catch you around. Guys here. Let's kill these guys. Okay, that was easy. What do I got over here? Let's get this guy here.
a welcome sight. Very responsive to the gameplay. It's very comfortable. So yeah, this plays really well. So no issues playing games with this thing. Okay, let's talk about the uh, keys for doing the colors without the software. And then we'll do pairing up with uh, uh, the computer via Bluetooth. So the FN2 key over here is used for toggling the different colors uh, you have. So you know, this is the colors right here. So number nine here is the different colors you can choose from. Okay, and then number zero here is uh, just like a toggle, and then uh, I think number nine and ten are the brightness. Yep, those are the brightness. So I kind of lower it down and bring it back up to its brightness setting. So, so you don't have to use the software you don't want to, but you know this it, it does you make it more easier if you want to do customization with the software. All right, so let's talk about now we want to use it without the wire. All right, so first thing first is uh, I will unplug this guy. Okay. Now, then on the back here, make sure you get the on-off switch, so we'll turn it on. Okay. Now, the, the, light, the back lighting is on, and so now hold the, the FN2 here, and then I'll use number two. Now, I'm going to hold it down for a few seconds until it blinks at you. There we go. And you hold it down. It's going to be blink fast, though. All right. So then uh, once it does that, uh, you should be able to do it now. It's a little bit confusing because uh, uh, you can switch, and... It's, it's blinking enough, I think it's going to uh, be enough. So if I go to the settings here, go to uh, see devices, Bluetooth, add a Bluetooth device, click on this, and it should see the Any Pro 2. Give it a second here to, to do so. And sometimes it's a little fickle. Hmm. There it is. Okay. So there it is. So uh, I'm not sure why it uh, didn't come up right away, but there it is. I click on this guy, it'll do connecting, and ta -da, ready to go. So now we're operational. So it should be anyway. There we go. So yeah, so now if I bring up WordPad again. time typing and it works just fine so now you're on battery so that's how you do the bluetooth comparing and then if you want to change it to, to another device like say my other computer i can hit the, F, the fn2 and then one and that should change it over to the other one now of course it's blinking because my other machine is actually not on so it won't find it so hit fn2 again and we're all back again so should change that way change that way and easily switch between different devices. And there you have it, a look at the Any Pro 2. Now this is, my, like I said, my first mechanical 60% uh, keyboard. And uh, I have brown switches on here, which I do like a lot. The linear play and the sound is fantastic, which is basically uh, great for typing uh, and for gaming. Now for programming, works pretty well too. Uh, the only thing is that you know when you're programming, you might have to use the arrow keys a lot. And so the inclusion of the Magic FN and the, the tap keys are here are a great addition because otherwise it'd be a lot harder. Now for programming, like I said, it takes a bit of getting used to because you know you don't have as many of the functions available if you're using say Visual Studio Code or something like that or Visual Studio uh, doing your, your work. But um, it's something you can definitely get used to and you can program macros for it. And software wise, it's fantastic. The software uh, it just lets you customize just about everything on this thing. You have to plug it in though if we want to program it. But once you're done, you can go wireless via the Bluetooth and you can pair it to four different, different devices. So it, it's really quite uh, phenomenal in that sense. Uh, size wise, there's not a whole lot of space other than keys. So it's, so it's definitely no wasted space on this thing. So it's definitely on the smaller side of a mechanical keyboard. So it definitely is a, it's, it's, if you want something space savings, 
this is definitely not worth what worth your while. The only thing I have to say is ergonomics is a bit tough because you have nothing over here. So I definitely highly recommend a wrist rest. Backlighting is fantastic. Uh, you get a lot of options for the backlighting. It looks really good. It comes through real nice. And the way the keys are, if you don't like these plain black keys, you can also buy additional keys. Banggood actually sells a lot of these different type of keys if you want something different to look for, like different iconography, different uh, colors and whatnots. Pretty customizable. So it's, it's really customizable. I can't think of anything else that's as customizable as this, as this keyboard that I've used so far. So I definitely love, like it. I definitely recommend it if you're looking for something small and mechanical to carry around that's also Bluetooth. So um, I think I covered just about everything I could think of. Uh, if there's anything I didn't cover you want to have questions about, just you know, leave a comment below. I'll do my best to answer your questions. And as always, thanks for watching and like and subscribe to my channel.